What's up, everyone? It's Chris Pombano, back from lunchtime here at the 2018 SCE National Conference. I'm here with my very good friend, Dee Dee Wills. How are you doing, Dee Dee? I'm super. How are you? Great. I mean, you're, it's getting packed right here right now. Awesome. We awesome. Got, we got our teachers in the dugout here. They're ready to go. <laughs> There we go. Sessions just ended this morning, and now it's lunchtime, and we, yes. we saved you for lunch. Yeah. Oh, yes. Did you eat yet? No? Not yet. Not yet. Would I'm you, thinking did, about food right now. Okay. Like, pretty much all the do time, you want, so that's good. Do you want some coffee, maybe? Oh, yes. That would be okay, awesome. there we go. There we go. Cheers. Okay. okay. We, we just thought we'd have some uh, top show coffee. There we go. Sponsored by ESGI. <laughs> it's delicious. So good. And nutritious. I know. We should put water in there or something. Or, <laughs> or something. <laughs> we probably should. Can I ask? something in there. <laughs> so speaking of ESGI, yes. I know you are big about getting teachers to use ESGI yes. and knowing the importance of how much time it saves for your classroom. Talk a little bit about that. Well, I started using ESGI probably, I'm going to say about six or seven years ago. Um, and, you know, I'm not super techie. So the idea of using a computer program to assess. Frightening. Yeah. I was, like went against everything that I thought was a good idea. Um, but as soon as I started using it, I was amazed at how much time I had. Um, I could go through and do the assessments really quickly. And what the greatest thing about ESGI is not only do you get the data, um, but you have usable data. Because we're assessing all day long, but we have data now that we can use to form um, our decisions that we're making in the classroom. So ESGI is amazing. Now, if you're watching at home, you're going to want to sign up for your free trial of ESGI at www.esgisoftware.com to see how much time you can save like Didi was yeah. talking about. You'll also, if you sign up for that free trial, or if you're an active user, they're going to be entered to win an ultimate SDE ESGI school so takeover. So exciting. I heard about this. This sounds amazing. So like a I lot think of you fun. should go. I would love to go. So if we can get Didi on that, then that would be good. Ooh, we can, that'd be we, fun. Can, we can hang out there. I know it'd so, be so okay, fun. Okay, so okay. I'm in. I'm in. Plan, we'll, we'll plan, make it happen. plan. So if you want SDE and ESGI to come to your school, make sure you share this post after Didi's done with her session. Watch all the live sessions all week long. Comment, like. All the things, all the things. All the things. To win that. And at the last broadcast at the end of the week, we'll give you a form to fill out with all the rest of the information. So, Perfect. Didi, Perfect. Your, yes. your session today is about centers. Right. So talk a little bit about how you integrate ESGI with centers within your classroom. So some centers that I have in my classroom, they're automatically differentiated, like writing center, some of these other centers, automatically. Students are going to do only what they're able to do, right? But then some centers need to be tailored specifically to what that student's like that, uh, we call it zoned proximal development, right? Right at the cusp of their learning. And so by having, I like to use big words, can you tell? No, but by <laughs> having um, that data of what letters do they know, what words that you know, you can customize the activities at that center so that it's right where they need to be. It's not going to be too hard, it's not going to be too easy, it's going to be just right. So I love it. So speaking of just right, oh, I have a just right game that I want to play with you. Okay. And I've been uh, this is literally when I won is I was like, I'm saving it for Didi. I'm saving it for Didi. <laughs> we did it once this morning, but this is this is the real deal now. This okay. is like no joke. So this is the whisper challenge. So we have noise canceling headphones here. Okay. I'm gonna put them on you. Okay. And I'm gonna say different phrases, and you have to guess what we're saying. There's gonna be loud music blar blaring in your ear. So I might be like. I might have some practice with this because when you get to a certain age, those of us in a certain age, your hearing isn't what it used to be. So my husband and I play this game on a daily basis. <laughs> like we're guessing back and forth. What did you say? So what you'll did you be say? A, so you'll be a pro. Well, I'm not guaranteeing, but I'll give it a go. Okay, and then we'll switch and then you'll do it to me. Sound Mercy. good? Yes, good. Okay, so I'm going to put them on. Okay, okay but when, when the music's going on, I might be really loud. That's okay. That's, that's good. That's funny. Okay, is the music playing? I'm assuming that's music, or she's just dancing to silence. I'm not sure, but I'm th that's music. We gotta go for music. Okay, so take me out to the ball game. S something about a small thing. <laughs> take me out to the ball game. Take. Can I phone a friend? No. Um, they can hear it. Take me out to the ball take, game. Take, take, take me out to the ball game. Yes. Okay, good. I'm really better at charades. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll help you. Okay. Same thing. <laughs> Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. Oh, totally got this. Buy me some peanuts and cracker yeah, jacks. Yeah, that was easy. I set you up for that one. I set you that one. Okay, here we go. Swing batter batter. Swing better, better. <laughs> no idea. Swing better, better. Sweep up better. Swing better, better. 
swing batter batter. A swing batter batter, there we go. Okay. Okay, we'll do two more. I'm starting more. to sweat. Three strikes, you're out. Oh, three strikes, you're out. Okay, I did trades. I got I gotta control my hands. Um hey now, I'm an ESGI all-star. I'm gonna need you to try harder. Hey now, I'm an ESGI all-star. Something corn chowder. I don't know. Hey now. Hey now. I'm an ESGI all-star. I'm gonna be an all-star. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Kind of. Okay, let's switch, let's switch, let's switch. It was ESGI all-star. Oh, it was so close. Oh, I gotta take this out or I can hear you, okay. Oh my gosh, I totally, y'all seriously? <laughs> Woo, okay. Uh, I only have four. Okay. I only have four. Clue number one. Number one. Hit me, baby, one more time. <laughs> I know, right? It's totally hard. Okay. I can't even say what I thought you said because it's so inappropriate. <laughs> I'm like sweating. Oh my, what? Okay, wait. Okay. Hit me, baby. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Should we skip it? Hit me. Baby. Baby. Hit me, baby. One more time. <laughs> nice. Okay. I, okay, I know the theme. Okay, <laughs> I'll be good at this now because I know the theme. Okay. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Okay. She's so lucky she's a star. She's... She just bought a car? <laughs> no, no. She's so lucky she's a star. She's so lucky she doesn't have a car. <laughs> Super close. First part is good. First word. Okay. She's so lucky. She's so lucky. She's a star. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay, one more. Is this Britney Spears theme just for me? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's all about you. A guy like you. A guy like you. I like you. Well, I do like you, too. I like you, too. Um, no. A guy like you. Uh, I like you. Uh-huh. <laughs> I give up. No, that's it. Take them off. I'll help you. A guy like you. A guy like you. A guy like you. Okay, put him back. Oh. <laughs> Should wear a warning. Should wear? A warning. A Wookiee? <laughs> a guy like you should wear, wear a... Wear a warning. Warning. Wookiees. <laughs> yes, that's it. Okay, let's just give it to him. A what? A warning. A guy like you should wear a warning? Yeah, it's like lyrics. I don't... Do that's maybe you know that? Spears? Yeah. That's Britney Spears? Yeah. I feel like the worst fan oh, ever. Oh, my word. From Toxic, yes? Oh, toxic. Okay, there we okay. go. There we go. Give it up for Dee Dee Wills. Woo! Thank you. Thank you're in the you. right place if you feel like you need help in organizing your materials. And you're right in the right place if you, um, we're going to talk about some routines about how to make uh, your centers run smoothly. Um, I think I skipped a, a slide. But um, I'm going to show you how to organize um, your materials. I'm going to show you that how to make your um, students work well with three as a crowd. I'm going to show you um, about transitions that would make your centers run smoothly. And I'll show you some accountability tips as well as what we do for early finishers. So let's go ahead and get started. This is how I organize my centers. So um, a, about a year ago, I was walking in Costco, and you know how teachers are completely different than other, other, other people in the world? They see something like colorful bins, and they get super excited. And then they tell your husband that you have to load up the bin with all of these. So I got a bunch of these bins. I took them home, and this is how I organize them. So I have each center, um, each bin has a month's worth of centers inside, just some of them. So what I did is inside of this bin, um, I have the black line masters and then the um, laminated centers that I'm going to use. Um, I went ahead and spiral bound those black line masters because I'm kind of famous for um, taking that black line to the copy machine and then never putting it back. And so then I don't ever know, you know where it happens. So by spiral binding, I make sure that I don't lose them. Um, so also another thing that I really like um, are frosting containers. Now I love frosting like more than anybody really should, but um, I did not eat all of this frosting, I promise you. Maybe like some of it. But what I like these for are card games. So you can put card games in there so that, you know how like if you hand out a card game to a student, they spend like 10 minutes getting them organized and they're not playing? These are great because they can just pull the card out and put it back in. It doesn't, they don't have to worry about if it's upside down or backwards. So frosting containers are great. And what I did in my school was I let everybody know that I was collecting these. So students would bring them in, 
former students would bring them in. So they would always come and say, are you still collecting these, Mrs. Wills? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. So those were fantastic for keeping those card games organized. Okay, so this is my, what my rotation board looked like. And I've, I'm of the mind of three students um, to a center is kind of a party. So I like to have two students at a center. Two students at a center, the third one makes it a party. So we want them to be working with a partner um, at their centers. So if you're looking here, I had 10 centers going at one time just for my ELA. So these two students um, would go to the pocket chart first and then their second center they would go to um, the, the game center. So this is what they would do. And then the next day um, I would shift the cards down um, so the students' pictures stay the same, the cards move down. So that's how they'd rotate students through those centers. Um, these are the bins that uh, they would go get their activities from. Now, if that student was going to um, work with me at my table, I would just slide the meet with teacher in front. I didn't try to organize it so that they wouldn't miss a center. So if they missed a center, no big deal. And the, here's the deal. Like, I used to try to schedule it so that they would never miss a center if they came to me, but it took so much planning time that that's really not the best use of my planning. Don't we spend enough time planning that we don't need to figure that? It's like planning the launching of like the space shuttle. It's like impossible to get that right. So um, this really helped me. I just, if they missed it, no big deal because I'll get to use it again. Um, and then when, this is what the math work board looked like, very similar. I would just flip that work chart over. So for math, I would have numbers one through, um, one through 12. And if they were at station number eight, they would come over and grab the bin for station number eight. And they would go um, to the spot um, in the classroom to work in station eight. This is, somebody always asks me, do you change out all of those centers every week? Like that would be crazy time, right? I used to, that would be really crazy, it would take a lot of time. What I, um, I would go in really early on Monday, I would take all the stuff out, put all new things in, but inevitably when I would open up that bin, I would find that there were a few pages left, a few response pages left. And so then I would say, oh, I'll put that in the file cabinet and I'll use that next year. Do you think that really happened? No. No, and then next year you open up like, oh, I still have these, and I'm not even using this anymore, I have something else. Um, and so what I did instead was, I would prepare all of those centers for the entire month, and I would have them stored in uh, these bins right here. If you look right here, I have those uh, Sterilite drawers. So I'd have one drawer for all of my math and one drawer for all of my ELA. So when a student would open up a bin and they would take out the last two response pages, they would just bring the bin to my desk and then go back to their center and do it. And then when it was time to clean up, they would come back and pick up the bin, but I had already put the new materials in there. Does that make sense? So in that way, my students were rotating those and I didn't have to spend a lot of time. They'd just come pick up the bin and we'd be ready to go. Okay, so when they picked up the bin, if they were at station number nine, they would go to a certain spot in my classroom for station number nine. Or if they were at station number five, they would go to a certain spot. I used to let them just pick a spot. What do you think happened when they would pick up the bin? They would be like roaming the classroom like, like nomads, right? They would, and they'd wanna all be together. And so we don't wanna have that. We want them to have a separate space so that they can work that's gonna work best for them. Um, okay, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about transitions. Transitions can be the devil if they don't go smoothly, right? Usually in transitions, that's where you lose some time, right? You can lose time really quickly or you can have behavior issues during transitions. Um, also, as a, a teacher, I can get caught up in something else and instead of having a two minute transition, now it's a five minute transition. And if you have five or six of these transmissions, not transmissions, transitions, or you could have transmissions, I don't know, but if you have that many transitions a day, how many minutes are you losing, right? So I use music to cue a transition. So as soon as time is up, I would go ahead and hit play on my, my sound system. I had like my computer hooked into my classroom and I would have like a two minute song and students had to clean up completely, neatly and completely and be back at their um, sitting spot by the time the song was over. So just pick a song that's really short, that's moving quickly. Um, I personally love Jack Hartman's um, uh, Rock and Roll Nursery Rhymes. Those are really great because they move along really quickly and they wear really well. We want to have a song because we're going to be hearing it all day long, right? You want to have a song that's going to be good. Okay, so use those, that music to signal transitions, but keep the songs short. When my students were finished with their station work, they would need a place to go put their paper, right? So they would finish, if it had a response paper, they would go ahead and put it in their bin. So in my, in my uh, school, I had, um, 
I used to have like the red table, the blue table, the green table, right? But then my students already knew their colors by the time we got to October. Those who didn't learned them by then. So I changed it to 2D shapes at the beginning of the year and 3D shapes at the end of the second part of the year. So I would have a circle table, a square table, or a sphere table and a cylinder table. Does that make sense? So when they're finished with their activity, um, they would very quickly, and you can say really carefully, put it in that bin, right? You see it's like overflowing. So those are just magazine, magazine bins. Um, and then several times a week, I would say, let's check station work. So we would grab those bins, and students would pull out their papers, and they would hand them to each. This is yours. This is mine. This is yours. This is mine. They would sort it for me so I wouldn't have to. And then I would just go quickly through and check it. I'm not correcting it, because, and I'm not taking a grade, because um, I don't know that they did that on their own. So I'm not worried if they didn't finish it. I'm not worried about it. It's not correct. Um, I'm not too worried about it if, if they've made a mistake, but it looks like they don't understand the concept, then that's a great opportunity for, for me to pull a small group. Does that make sense? So after I've gone through and counted them all, um, I have a little punch card, and you can see it in the bottom right-hand corner, and I just give them a punch for every station that they completed um, to their best of their ability. All right, another uh, tip that I want to give you is a way for you to um, keep your students um, accountable for their work and a way for you to manage. So in my little fantasy land of kindergarten, I used to think that after the first six weeks of us going over routines, I wouldn't have to go over it again. Is that true? No. So um, I found that, you know, in week seven, week eight, all of a sudden things started to slide off and we weren't doing centers the way that I really wanted them to. Um, and so I decided an ounce of prevention is better. So I would use this chart just to go through and review um, at least two or three times a week. So I had one for math and one for ELA. And it basically says, if you can't read it, um, at Sanders we use a level one voice. We get started quickly. We stay in one place. We are kind and we share. Um, we use reading words and writing words. And we clean up neatly and completely. So that really saved me some time. Now the chart that's in the middle was one that took me forever to realize that I need it. Um, how many of you pull small group and you tell students you can't interrupt me and you put like some kind of crown or like a flower pot on your head, right? You can't interrupt me. And then as soon as you sit down, beeline right to you and they say, I don't know what to do. So I would watch my students literally grab the station container, not even like glance at it and walk right over to my table and say, I don't know how to do this. Like you haven't even looked inside. So I would say, well, you know, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? But I never had an anchor chart. And um, if you're finding that you're repeating yourself over and over again to the point where you feel like you might scream or lose your mind, um, it probably should have an anchor chart. So this is what my anchor chart looked like. It's super simple. And if you look at it, you can tell I had just had it because like the cutting is not neat. I just slapped it up there. I had had it. So it just says, if you have a question, ask your partner. If they don't know, you can look at the I can card because that shows you what to do. If that doesn't help, look at the station. Um, organization board, find out who was there before you. They just did it, so they will know what to do. And if that doesn't help, you can ask three people. And if that doesn't help, then you can ask the teacher. So as I would have a few of my honeys, because you know they want, they want to interact with you, they pick up the bin and they start walking towards you, I would just point to the chart and they're like, oh yeah, so then that really helped them. And it allowed me to stay calm um, and it allowed my students to get started quickly. Um, a couple other things people had asked me in the past, how do you keep that noise level down? Well, one thing, having two students to a center helps a lot, helps a lot. But you can also have some apps out there that will help you um, monitor the sound. So a couple of them, they're free. One of them is bouncy balls, so like it shows the balls bouncing. If it gets too loud, it gets, they bounce higher and higher. And then another one is um, too noisy. So those are a couple apps that you can use. All right, so. Another tip that I have is what do you do with early finishers? So you have some students who will finish the stations, but the time isn't up, so what do we do with them? And I've had some teachers say, well, I just have them sit at their desk quietly. Is that, like, is that really a thing? No, never is a thing. They're always like bothering somebody else or they're talking. So um, I like to have some activities that they can do after. So these are my early finisher tubs. I had five of them. They coincide with the tables. So if they were at the circle table, they would grab the bucket that had the circle on there, right, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, we would just move those labels so they would have something new the next day. Um, and I'm, 
I always forget to do this. So then I, I wait for that student to come in and say, uh, Mrs. Wills, uh, you forgot to change. And I'm like, oh my gosh, could you be that person for me? And so then that, that student then is in charge of moving those. It usually takes me about two weeks to forget. And then, you know, you have those people, those students in your class that can run your class even if you're not there. So Bossy Flossy is now in charge. So she's going to do that. Okay, so I have bins. Let me show you. I'll show you a couple things that I have in it. Um, one, handwriting. So just use whatever your handwriting cards are. Put a whiteboard in there and some markers. Perfect. You don't have to make anything new. So this is what I want to tell you. You don't have to make anything new because don't we spend a lot of time making things? So you're going to want to take stuff that you already have in your classroom and put in these early finisher bins so that they can overlearn it. We want them to overlearn that skill. Um, you can have puzzles that you've already completed before. Put those in there. They can do those. You can have retired games, things that you've already done. Just put them in there. Now this you can see, I have a back to school game and I have a Thanksgiving game. I could have this out in January. They don't care. They don't care. They love, they love to, especially ginger man stuff, they like to do that all, all year long. Um, you can have some games. Um, a, this is a, like a sight word fluency and a math fluency. So these are out of season, but I can put those in those bins and they can play them again and again. They don't really care that they're doing um, a spring activity um, when it's June or in May. They don't care about that. We're the ones that get really hooked up on those, those seasons, but students love to play those old favorites over and over again. Um, or you can have a time meet activity. So these are just basically flashcards, and you can have words on there, or you can have phrases on there, and add a timer, and it's instantly a great activity. And this is where ESJ really helps me, because I can have multiple um, sets of cards that are tailored to students' needs. One student might be really working on uh, letters, and another student might be working on words, and another student might be working on phrases. Um, and then this is one of the favorite things that we had in my classroom was Reader's Theater. Um, this is not something that I made. It's made by a teeny tiny teacher. How many of you know that name? She sells them on Teachers Pay Teachers. These are absolutely fantastic. So um, it's a two-part play. Oftentimes when you see Reader's Theater for kindergarten, it's way too hard. Have you noticed that? It's way too hard. But hers is just right, so I love those. Um, and poems that we've had before that we've retired, they can go back and, and recreate those and sing those songs again. Um, last tip, and this is like tip um, number six, so this is a bonus tip, is how do I differentiate centers? Um, some of my centers, like I said earlier, are automatically differentiated. So they're only going to do what they can do with the writing center, right? We don't need to level that. But some centers do need to be leveled. And so I just um, tag those with washi tape. So I have a certain color that I would use for um, students who are on level, a certain uh, color that I would use for students who are still working towards getting on level, and another color for students who are above level. So just putting washi tape on there, you can put it on the bag or on the workboard or whatever you're going to be using, really helps you to differentiate really quickly. Okay, I was talking really fast, um, but we're to the end. Um, I want to let you know that this is just part of... Uh, um, a session that I have a webinar. So one of the things I love to do are webinars. So if you go to my site, mrswillskindergarten.com, and you're going to see these tabs across here, one thing you're going to see is workshops. So if you click on that, you'll be able to see um, some webinars that I've already completed. And I have one that's called Mastering Centers Like a Boss. So it'll review what I just talked about, plus give you a whole lot more information. Um, another thing on my blog you might want to look for is that free button over there. And that will allow you to download all kinds of really, really awesome, fun things that you could do for your classroom, it's not going to cost you anything except for your email. So you'll put your email in there, and then I'm going to spam you like crazy. No, I won't spam you. But I will send you different things, um, free things just to you, um, information, um, little quick blog posts. So it's a helpful way for us to kind of keep in connection. Um, and I think that's it. All right. Awesome. Thank you.